Hello, Internet. This uh, 3X 10, 10Gs OC from MSI came with crashing. It came crashing down, so uh, we're going to go straight into the boot. See if we can boot. Uh, I got I got a lot of problems here right now. My drives are disconnected. I am trying to create um, a lightweight uh, T server version of a T server, um, so that we can all enjoy AMD memory testing software. That does not require 120 gigabytes of download. Let's see. Uh, today you will witness the uh, work in progress of my um, NVMT uh, mats mods thingy. I uh, working. I'm working on a menu. So there you go. We have a menu. So first, press one to run uh, mods training. So we're gonna run one. Running mods. Mods is probably gonna pass. Yep, mods pass. So, and then it says a hey, type menu to run to return the menu. So we're gonna go dot forward slash menu. So back at the menu, let's run the mats by pressing two and hitting enter. There we go. Mats is probably gonna pass, but we're gonna run NVMT as well. So this is going to be, uh, this is like a tech demo uh, menu, uh, run NVMT. And I can put all sorts of stuff in there. Uh, so what, why, okay, nano, nvmt.log. So let's scroll down and look for any irregularities. So it looks like A1 has some weird run random numbers. It looks like, what is this? B0, which is close to A1, C0, oh, black screen, perfect, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and power, so I think I'm still in the, uh, so let me go ahead and close this, let me power this down, I'm gonna see if I can power this down, because I'm going blank, I'm all blank right now, I have no idea what's going on. Okay, there we go. I think we finally managed to shut it down. Oh, it turned by itself on. You piece of trash. Stop it. Stop it. I hate it when it does it. I don't know. I tried to twinkle with uh, power settings to make it stop turning on. You know, like automatically reboot with the power uh, surge settings, whatever, power failure settings. It just keeps on turning on by itself. So, I don't know what to do with it. Okay. Nothing special here. The diagnosis is the same. As nearly 90% of the GPUs that I get. And need the reball. Nothing else. Everything else is working fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this GPU. Except for the environmentally friendly activism um, aftermath. Where we now have to make everything lead free. <clears throat> including ourselves. So, okay, so I cannot remove that until I remove that. Okay, let's remove that. So these lead free, that lead free solder uh, is becoming so much lead free. You have no idea. There's so much lead free that the lead amount in there is negative. It's not zero, it's negative. It will suck any lead around it into itself is how much of a lead free it is. And as a result, it'll crack when you fart on it. So if you look at your GPU in a funny way and then you fart, it'll crack the solder joint. 
And then your GPU is going to end up here. And then you'll be like, dude, this thing's brand new. Well, yeah, you farted on it. It's your fault. Okay, why is it not? Why are you not dismounting? Come on. Oh, there we go. Ooh, look at that. Look at that MSI beauty. Mm-mm, delicious. Yeah, whatever. Uh, we've seen everything by now. Well, not everything, but I've seen enough. That I am no longer excited. To me, this is just... This is work. This is this is how I make my living now. Ever since I got fired. For being... Too organized. Too productive. Exceeding, exceeding performance... On a regular basis, I was kicking ass. And I got fired. Because I disagreed with the manager. So, I learned my lesson. Never disagree with the manager. But my problem was, I was doing a job for 12 years. And I could not just sit there and watch people suffer. The extra amount of work that they had to do that would result in no productivity whatsoever, but they would just get, they just get tired. People would work, they get tired. And they, and, and the production is like bare minimum. Whereas my ways would have been um, work less, produce more, everybody happy. Uh, my manager didn't like it. Here in Kentucky, people don't like change. They don't like improvement. Um, which I can kind of respect, uh, to certain points in life, you know, like the world has gone crazy and a lot of changes happening everywhere and the Kentucky is just kind of stuck in the past and uh, you know it's certain aspects and I do appreciate that no problem with that but when it comes to uh, quality of life quality of work and just you know quality in general uh, in, in, in manufacturing maybe in production in in services you know things like that they're like nope we done it with the hoe, we done it with the shovel and the rake, whatever, you know. Since uh since the civil war and we ain't gonna change it. That's kinda how they uh that's their mentality here. But I tell you what, if it wasn't for people like me that come from the West, these people here would still be dry would still be riding horses instead of Toyota Priuses and pickup trucks that they love so much. Oh, the pickup trucks. They are everywhere. Actually, actually, I'm surprised how in the world poor state like Kentucky is able to afford a gas drinking um tractor called a pickup truck okay my thing broke Arr. okay I gotta do something about this I don't like it this thing needs an upgrade and my mill is currently disassembled because I do not have a table to set the mill down on and secure it and the reason why I don't is because in this state here, finding a good solid metal table is a nightmare. If you find one, 500 bucks. So while there may lack in technology or 
things like uh, seat covers and the toilets. You know, almost everywhere you go, no seat covers. They still think that if you uh, say a short prayer before you sit down on the toilet, all of the diseases will skip. For whatever reason, I don't know. But, you know, that's kind of how they think around here. Unless you go to a hospital where they have to comply with the CDC guidelines and whatever. Uh, but anywhere else you go, church, store, good luck. You sit on that toilet. And then the next week you got herpes and you'd be like, oh, I must have sinned. Nope, you just sat on a dirty toilet. So, I'm going to get that core rebuild and... Uh, We'll get back to recording the rest of this pointless video. Okay, so card is cooled. I will check the resistances real quick, and uh, I think we can go ahead and boot this thing up, see if we can run a memory test this time. But probably on... Or did we? I think we did. I don't know. I don't remember this far back, so... I'm just going to have to assume. I'm going to have to assume that we did have a picture. Uh, but for the sake of the entertainment, I will run the memory test just one more time. And we will lube the slot with the gold guard pen. Yes. yes. That is a premium customer service the gold guard you don't get that at any other repair place than here so if you want your GPU gold guarded send it my way all right let's see if we get a picture hopefully we get a picture I have no picture, but why? Okay, let's disconnect the HDMI cable and check for voltages while we are while we're at it. Let's see if we have the core. See, we don't have a core. Ha 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 ha! Something died. Do we have 1.8? Yes, sir. So next one's gonna be core, but we don't have the core, so we don't have a memory either. And we don't have a PEX. So we just lost the core. But why? Yeah, probably controller died. Who cares? Okay. Let's uh, maybe wiggle the cable. And uh, I'm going to try again. Who knows? Maybe the cable wasn't connecting properly. You never know. But I highly doubt it. And the proof to that would be no voltage on the core. Okay. Oh, it's even complaining about something. Why do I not have voltage on the core? Simply because we lost it. Something got hot and something died. So not a problem there. We're just going to have to figure it out. What's going on? We've done this hundreds of times. And that noise means I gotta go. So I'm gonna have to drop this right where it is. And uh, But I'll show you right away. I'll show you real quick that we do not have any power consumption whatsoever. 12 volt? Yes, sir. Oh, we do have a core. We must have had a glitch in the connection. Maybe we didn't connect something. I don't know. I swear we have a core. Absolutely. 
0 0.75 volt. Okay, must be a connection issue somewhere. Probably a stupid riser, as usual. But then we had 1.8, we had 5. I'm a little confused, so I'm going to deal with that when I get back. Because I got to go. I'm back, baby. I'm back, baby. And I found... I found some crack joints on my uh, riser. There. Things wiggling around, so we're going to do... We're going to fix this with a leaded solder. All right. Hopefully, I'm going to check for voltages right away as soon as I boot the card. So that way, that way I know whether or not it's going to give us a picture. Or whether or not I should be expecting a picture. Hold on. Can I put that there? And where is the power button? Yes, there it is. Right there. All right, well, no, I don't want to, I'm going to need to be able to boot to, well, I don't have to boot to Windows just yet. Okay, so let's go. We have the power. Yes, sir, we have the power. So we're probably going to get a picture. One happy beep. We have a picture. So let's run a memory test and see if... Oh, did not have the USB uh, plugged in. Let's try again. Let's uh, try to run a memory test that we were unable to run before. And uh, hopefully it'll run this time. So we're going to go, we're going to run mods. Well, no, we're not going to run mods because we already have a picture. So mods isn't going to tell us anything. We're going to run mats. And uh, mats is looking fine. And we got a p pass. P pass. Menu. Okay, let's run an MT. Okay, uh, nano. NVMT.log. I should probably make that automatic. Okay, so some discrepancies on A1. Uh, well, actually, they show up all over the place, so I'm, not, I'm gonna ignore it. C0. Lots of discrepancies on C0. I do not like NVMT. While you can see all the inconsistencies, 99.9% .9 that does not mean there's a problem. See like here, C0, lots of weird numbers. Who knows what they mean? I don't know. Bottom line is it'll probably work. So let's continue on down. See, I'll be more concerned if I see a uh, like a zero on the right. On this column here, if I see zero there, that would definitely be a problem. But I don't see it. So, uh, some different values on C1. That's that's it. Everything else is looking fine. And uh, A1, yeah, some weird numbers on the A1 and C0 and C1. I don't know. Power off. Only one way to tell if it's going to work is to boot it up and run a stress test. I have yet seen a card. I have yet, well, I have yet heard from any of my customers who would get a card that would not have a super clean NVMT report uh, sent back to them and I, I've never heard them I never heard them say hey it doesn't work or hey broke them you know later never as a matter of fact my very own 
2080 Ti that I'm using every single day. I'm using it to render. I'm using it for 3D stuff. So <clears throat> using uh, memory rather heavily at, one, at at times, you know, rendering video clips and whatnot. Zero problems. Yet the NVMT uh, training status is inconsistent. So I don't really rely on NVMT that much, to be honest. One funny thing I like to point out before I close this is how rough the surface of this plate is. That is rough. I don't know why. I don't know why MSI did that, to be honest. What was their main um, objective? behind the uh, decision of making it the way it is no idea um, but there might be some black magic behind it we will see it as soon as we run the stress test so a um, few seconds after of a fur mark Literally, a few seconds. Fan at 100%. What are we losing here? Well, we don't have a core, obviously. Not going to have it. So, my guess... Eh, let's see if I can turn this off. If the keyboard is still responding. Nope, keyboard... Oh yeah, it does respond. Okay, so we can probably shut this down. So we're losing the core. And uh, I'm guessing... See, now it turns on again. Thanks. Is it going to work? No? Oh, hello. Let's see. Let's see what just happened. Let's see if we can turn off the fan. Kind of wonder what happened. Come on. Let me switch over to the main display here. Stop. Stop. Oh, why are you going to Windows, you piece of trash? No. I'm going to have to kill this one. Okay. And one more time. Come on. <sighs> So it looks like it's doing something when it's warmed up. But it wasn't even... It was ice cold. So whatever led to the issue... We may have a crack solder joint under memory, though... I don't know. Let's run mods. See? Mods doesn't care. So... Okay, let's reboot. Let's go into Windows again. And let's try to warm it up um, slower this time. Do I still get the core voltage? Yes, still have the core. Which means the card is still working. So let's see. Let's look at the GPU Z real quick. We're going to open Afterburner to disable. Oh, hello. See, we got a memory problem now. Ha ha ha. No, wait a minute. That's Intel. Never mind. Switch to NVIDIA. Yeah, NVIDIA is working fine. Temperatures are looking good. We're going to run Heaven, and we're going to go in here, and we're going to make that fan super slow. Or zero. And let's run this. Let's see what it does. Seems to work fine.
40, 30 degrees on the core. Jeez, core is ice cold. Do we have 100% GDP? Yes, we do. Limited by the power. 50. Everything is looking good. Maybe we had a maybe we had an issue with the driver, though I doubt it because the card was a no detect temporarily and we lost the power. But why? So let's see. So looking at the core and the hotspot, uh, what do we have? We got like 14 degrees apart, which is not impressive. And there we go, 62 degrees, and it's going into... Stop. I don't want you to cool down. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. Come on. Come on, shut down. I'm going to have to force it to shut down. And we're going to go into memory test. And see what we get. Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay. So it wasn't the driver issue. We were we we're clearly losing power. Okay, so mods run the mods. Mods should tell us if we have a problem with memory right away, and we do not. Okay. Uh, menu. Go menu. Run mats. Well, mats is gonna take a while. Run three. Okay, nano nvmt dot log. Let's look at the nvmt. I don't see anything new. Yeah, everything's the same. So it's not a memory issue, it's a power issue. So let's address that real quick by taking the card apart one more time. Okay, so let's deduce this situation what is it that we have going on for whatever reason if you remember correctly that we had 5 volt still on board 1.8 volt still on board we were losing the next thing to lose is the core so we were losing the core and the fan go 100% blast why that happens I do not know but we are going to find out one way or another. So let's power it on while the board is a little warm. And it looks like it was kind of struggling. It was struggling uh, to keep up with the voltage demand, which makes me suspect that we have a faulty driver MOSFET that was on its last legs and by the time we uh, finish with the reball, it finally died. So let's see. Let's look at the thermal camera. I'm going to increase the amperage limit because we were at 3.75 amps and yet it was not booting right away. So let's see. Hopefully you can see this without the glare. You guys see this? I hope you see this. Let me show it to you one more time. I think we I think we found it. Right there. <laughs> you sneaky bastard. See that happens sometimes. Is it this guy? Nope, it's the one right next to it. Right there. This son of a gun, right there. So second driver MOSFET. Let's verify one more time. Wood, wood. Yep. Second driver MOSFET. Okay. This guy needs to be replaced. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Right there. What is that? Anyway, 
that's uh, a good detective work. Great job, team. You and I have uh, correctly identified the problem. And uh, the funny thing is, what if... What if... The problem was here to begin with. And then you think, well, you just wasted your so much time reballing the core. That may be true. However, once I reball the core, the chances of this GPU to live happy ever after much longer than it would have been with the lead-free solder balls underneath is now much higher. So I will get that thing replaced and I'll uh, try again. All right. You can turn off now. There's our card. Let's see if we uh, create any problems. I do not want to see any shorts on 5 volt or 12. And we don't. Good here. Good there. What? No, we're good. Okay. So now... Now... We should not see that many amps being drawn. Maybe two amps, but not three and a half for sure. And we can look at the camera. The thermal camera, that is. To confirm that nothing's getting hotter than it should be. And if it does, we will actually see it a lot quicker on the thermal camera. Which never works unless you close all the applications for whatever reason. Um, and then, let's see. See? Good. I think we're good. And we were drawing what? 1.8? 1.82? See, there you go. So my um, conclusion with this repair is that the driver MOSFET was faulty. Um, it could have been faulty from the beginning. I admit, I admit that. Uh, and what was happening is it was working too hard and it forced the controller to go into a thermal shutdown because it was overheating. Which means you should always check everything. See, because when I, when I hear someone say, hey, it's crashing under load, to me that sounds like to me, it sounds like the power is working, but once it gets warm, uh, connection under the core breaks, and we start getting issues, which is actually very typical. Uh, but this situation was a little bit on tip not typical. But nevertheless, I hope you guys have learned something out of this one, because even I learned something out of this one. And what I learned was that there could be exactly the same symptoms, but the cause is completely different. So, but you know, when it happens so many times, you kind of know where to look. And that's the bottom line is. So, bottom line is, you got to learn where to look. Crash under load, fans blast 100%, either either you lost 1.8 which you lost which makes you lose everything else down the road or you lost the core find out why you're losing the core um you know like in this instance we had a faulty driver mosfet which will shut down the core due to reported overheating um sometimes uh i've seen this um at least twice uh where broken solder joints that are responsible for communicating with uh, uh, PVM on the fan. They break. Once the card warms up, fan go full blast. 
and uh, everything is just repeating itself basically and the other thing that we've learned today is that this MSI solution of having this rough surface if if anything it's making it worse So I'll put this together, run another set of stress tests, and let you know how it turns out. It crashed again. So I'm taking that apart again. Because I got nothing else to do. Exact same way. It was running fine for much longer, and then it went bam. Black screen, no power on the core. All right. So let's see, what's, what is it doing now? What are you doing now? Now that you're warmed up. Maybe something's misbehaving once it warmed up. I don't know. Oh yeah, it's, it's down. I can already see it. it's struggling, but why? Why is it struggling? Let's see. What's what's dead now? Come on. Well, hello. You see this? I wonder is it the same is it the same one or is it the one below? So the same one would be would be this one. This will be the same one, but is it the same one? Absolutely yes. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> so my question is, I don't think that this is the driver MOSFET that's causing the issue. I think it's his brother. Um, let's see. Is that memory? Yes. I think it's the guy that's directly above. Or it could be the guy directly below. It's really hard to tell. I have to look at the schematics and see. Um, one last place I'd like to look at would probably be... Uh, before I go into replacing another driver MOSFET. So now my guess is this MOSFET is probably toast as well as its neighbor. So I want to see if the PWM here is anything but noise. So I want to see... Mm, What does that do? Holy cow. So this is a this is a bad one. Let's look at the PVM. PVM is looking fine. And PVM on this one is looking fine. I know you guys can't see nothing. But you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. So this one looks fine. This one looks fine. This one does not. So What's interesting you you probably want to see this. You want to see this. Don't you want to see this? So the one above is noisy. The one below is also noisy. And the reason why it's noisy is because this one is super noisy. So, uh, but the PVM uh, pins on both actually look fine. Um, so, let me show you. So, if I would poke the PVM pin, hopefully I can get it right. Yes. So, the PVM looks fine. It's still noisy. But it's, but it's the same. It's the same on all of them. So, um... What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this driver MOSFET.
Alright. There's our GPU. Turn off the blower. Turn on the sucker. Resistance check. Good there. Good there. Oh. Uh. Good there. Good there. Good there. Okay. So. Then I want to look at every phase. All right. So what is it going to look like now? It looks good. Again, this one looks good. Wait a minute. Let, let's look at this a little closer. That's a memory. That's a memory. Do you guys notice the length of this signal compared to this driver MOSFET? So this one and this one, they have, uh, I don't know what is it that they have, 100 nano, so that's 200 nanoseconds. This one's 150. So this one's good. This one's good. This one's good. This is a little odd, but so everything is looking good. Memory. So I guess we have a problem here after all. This phase does not look right. And that is probably why we're having all these issues. So what I want to do is I'm going to go under a microscope and I'm going to check the circuitry around this driver MOSFET. Specifically, I am interested in... Um, Resistors and uh, that's about it. So I'll go ahead and check this out and I'll uh, update you with what I find. Okay, so looking at this driver MOSFET, um, resistors are fine. Um, this resistor here, this one, what else? This one. This resistor, don't even care. Um, that one is just a 5 volt supply for the driver, driver on, whatever. Um, and that's just the filtering for the driver on. Okay, so that filters driver on signal. The only thing that I can think of, uh, it, it, what could short, um, this driver's pulse width is especially the resulting pulse width because we're not talking about the uh, the one that's coming from the driver must actually you know what why don't we look why don't we look at the um, PVM signal that's coming from the controller in a little bit of a uh, greater greater detail so where are we okay so i'm going to zoom i'm going to zoom into this thing see if i can get a very nice clean signal here 
So we are at 150. Wait a minute. What about the other one? See, 200 nanoseconds. And we're actually getting 150 nanoseconds coming from the controller. Okay, so the issue is not the driver MOSFET. What is the issue then? Let's... Um, Fourth one down, yes. So let's see where that goes. That goes directly into the pin number six. It also goes into this resistor, 2K resistor, pull-up resistor to 5 volt. So we might want to check that. That is at the front, so let's go ahead and check that resistor, make sure that it is indeed... that it is indeed two kilo ohms okay let's let's do that that should be easy that should be easy there okay where is this resistor oh my goodness yeah good luck finding that so we need to kind of map it so it's on the left of the controller it's right above that three-legged transistor then we have um big capacitor on the left ah uh -huh, so that pull-up resistor does not exist at least i do not yeah it's it doesn't exist so, we can ignore that. Uh, we can go straight into the controller on the back, which sucks. Let's see, what do we have here? What do we have here? Is this the one? Or is it the bottom one? No, it's the top one. And we need a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Fifth pin from the right, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five. So this resistor here should be two kilo ohms. We are measuring 10. What about this one here? Wait. If this is 10K... It actually says it's supposed to be one kilo ohm. And then the other one's supposed to be one kilo ohm. The one that next to it's supposed to be one kilo ohm. So all of these resistors, every single one of these resistors here, all three of those, supposed to be measuring the exact same resistance. So, uh, let me see. So ground, ground. So we should have what resistors are we going to get here? So we get 80k in here, 14k here, 14k here. That resistance is probably due to a controller. So the only way to know for sure is to remove this controller and see. Uh, instead, instead of doing that, we're going to check for a signal at the controller and see if we get any noise uh, at before and after. If we don't get anything at the controller, and I mean noise or whatever, then uh, then our phase is probably, then that's probably a resistor that's bad. So let's see. So let's check the uh, phase that's right next to it. 200 nanoseconds uh, and then this one yep so this one is uh, incorrectly t it's not timed correctly so and it and it is not timed correctly at the controller um, so what's what's the next step to do okay I can probably 
to be 100% sure. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's remove this resistor. See what's what it's doing. I want to see if uh, if anything changes. That's gonna be a challenge to, to remove. Okay. That was very difficult. Let's see if that signal normalized without the resistor. Nope still the same okay it's time to replace the controller all right so let's check for resistances specifically on 5 volt nothing there let's power the card see what it does looks like we have everything working so let's go back into the... Oh, you've been watching the scope all that time. <laughs> and you didn't even tell me. So let's look at the uh, signal PDM that will be coming straight from the controller. Almost. Almost 2 nanoseconds. 200 nanoseconds. See, this is a little longer. This one's just ever so slightly shorter. I do not understand why it does that. So this one looks fine. It's even higher too. Hmm. There's a lot of noise on this end. Way too much noise. Maybe trigger's incorrect? Yeah, okay, never mind. Well, the thing is, we had this one phase here that was kind of noisy. It looked kind of funny, but now it looks nice. So I guess we solved one problem. But this one... It's still short. I don't understand why. Okay, so I tried to replace this capacitor, this resistor, this capacitor, which is boot. The one place I haven't looked at would be the feedback. Let's see. Uh, so what is this? This is... What what PVM is this? So this this is a phase two. Okay. Let's go into the... Let's go into the controller. It's actually PVM6. So we need ISEN6 right there. So I want to see if maybe there's something wrong with the sense circuit that's throwing the controller off. You know what? I don't think there's anything wrong with the with the controller or the driver MOSFET. I still think that we have a problem with these resistors, with this one on the left. I still think we have a problem with this resistor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap these resistors around. And I want to see if... Wait. But we've already done that. Haven't we? We've already checked that the noise, the difference in the pulse width actually comes from the controller itself and not C4 
See, I don't understand. Why does the controller take six phase and shortens it? All right, so I've been digging around this thing for a while. It's 2.30 in the morning. And uh, what I found out, I was just going through a feedback. And uh, I would go ahead and I'd check the signal before and after this resistor on the neighboring phase. But when I do the same thing on the troubled phase, I get nothing on the other end of the resistor. Um, I don't know what this resistor is. Probably a zero ohm or something. Yep. So let's go ahead and replace this resistor. Is it, is it this one? Yeah. So let's go ahead and replace this resistor. Which I should have plenty of. And see if that helps. Alright, that looks like a factory. Now let's look at the before. Oh look, we got 200 nanoseconds. Even a little higher. So, which makes me wonder, what is this? So now, <laughs> that's funny, so now we have a different problem. Now we're overshooting. So we were undershooting, now we're overshooting. See, 200 nanoseconds. And now this one's 200 and a quarter. Interesting. A new symptom. But why? Okay, so uh, after replacing this resistor, the signal also goes So that's a feedback signal. So I've already replaced this capacitor and I've replaced this resistor. Now the other thing that I suspect is actually not uh, anything that's at the front, but rather on the back. So if we go here and if we follow the board, so this thing doesn't exist. Uh, 20k. So I want to look at this 20 kilo ohm resistor, which is doing what? I don't know what it's doing. I want to look at this one kilo ohm resistor here, which is part of the feedback, and I wonder. And that is a sense pin for the for that phase. So let's see if this resistor is actually one kilo ohm. Let's see if we can. Um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and power the card. Yeah. So this whatever I just did didn't help. But let's go back here and see if that resistor is actually one kilo ohm which would be uh, I don't know it is this resistor there I have 3.2k I don't think that's normal so let's get rid of this resistor and put 1k resistor on there all right now I'll check for resistances one more time. And hopefully, hopefully I get a kilo ohm. I have exactly one kilo ohm. Okay. So, actually, let me go ahead and uh, turn on the camera. And the camera on the side. So that you can see what I'm doing. 
Okay, let's check the signal now and see if we are two nana. Holy cow. <laughs> okay, so. See, we're now three. Uh, 300 nanoseconds. Which means we need a higher value resistor there. Let's um, uh, let's see. What about the one k, one k, one hundred k? Uh huh. I want to check what is the resistance of the of this resistor right there. So we j have just replaced this resistor, but it could probably. Uh, but I want to see what is the value of this re resistor, which uh, senses the uh, the other uh, phase. And I kind of wonder um, what the value of this resistor would be. So let's measure that because sometimes uh, the board view says one thing, but in reality it's actually something different. So it's always which is annoying. So let's go ahead and check this resistor there. If we can find it. It's going to be this lonely guy. And I'm guessing we're probably going to have like 3 plus kilo ohms or something. Some it's going to be it's going to have to be more than 1 kilo ohm for sure. And it says it's 1.2, 1 1.24. So we've got 1K here. One point two here. Let's check another resistor, maybe. Uh, yeah. What about this resistor here? What's your value? This one is four hundred four hundred thirty five ohms. <laughs> Okay, I don't trust that. What about the phase that's going after? And the phase that's going after would be what is the value of this of this one? Four hundred thirty-five ohms instead of 1k that's interesting so we have we got 1.2k here four hundred thirty five four hundred thirty five very interesting let's check another another phase so this is also 1k but we already checked that that turned out to be like 500 ohms or something <coughs> what about this one here 1k 1k okay so let's check let's check if this guy is actually 1k it will be this resistor there but we got 3.3k so maybe 3.3k let's put a 3.3k here let's see if 3.3k uh, gives us any positive result and we don't have to go very far, we can just test it right here. If we see the signal is any longer, or shorter actually. Let me see if I can switch over to, yep, there we go. So if the signal on the at the controller 
has shortened, which I expect it did, then we should probably be okay. Oh, I can't even see it. Too low. Uh, hard to say. It doesn't look like it did. It looks like... Well, it, it got shorter, but um, it kind of got back to where it was, to some degree. This is taking way too much time. So what else could cause this signal to go haywire? Oh, hello. Hello. I think we just got it fixed. And I think that well, wait up. I think we just got it fixed. I don't know. Let me see. let me see. We may have gotten it fixed by accident. So let's go and uh, check. Let's let's look at the good face. A uh, little noisy there. There. So two nanoseconds. Two nanoseconds. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think I know what happened. The couple of resistors that I just reflowed on the back. That was it. That was it. Just a couple of resistors that I reflowed. And that was it. This is nuts. I set up until 3 o'clock in the morning last night trying to figure this thing out. And all it was is a stupid resistor on the back. Well, that's it. I've been running the carts for a few minutes now. That's it. That would be it for this repair. I really hope you learned something out of this video. And uh, have a blessed day. Goodbye. We're going into shutdown. That's enough problems for me for one day.